So as you probably have heard by now, the YouTubers pumping you FTX are getting sued in a class action. And moreover, the government is looking into it. We're talking namely the FTC. Uh, these are the YouTubers who are getting sued. Uh, Kevin Pathrath, Rand Steffen, Andre Zeke, Jaspreet Singh, Brian June, Jeremy LaFove, Tom Nash, Ben Armstrong, Erica Kohlberg, and their agency, Creators Agency. So again, this is big news. They're getting sued. This is part two. I want to go over some more details. And uh, thanks for coming back for more. This is the part that the government is playing here. You can see this. FTC issues orders to social media and video streaming platforms regarding efforts to address surge in, in advertising for fraudulent products and scams. So the government is really concerned about all these basically scams that these YouTube people were pumping. Meta platforms, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Snap, Twitter, Pinterest, uh, and Twitch. And uh, basically, uh, this is a quote from the government. Social media has been a goldmine for scammers uh, who tout sham products and other scams that have cost uh, consumers enormous, enormously recent years. This study will help the FTC ensure that social media and video streaming companies are doing everything they can to keep the scammers and deceptive ads off their platform. So basically, the FTC is really cracking down on these things. Um, they want more information about how you know YouTube reviews, whether or not something's a scam, how much money is passed around, and things like this. And I think this opens up the uh, YouTubers who are pumping FTX to a wide range of things that could uh, be going on. And also, too, remember, they're part of the same agency pushing this thing. Moreover, I want to take a look at some more details of the lawsuit against the YouTubers. So we have here count one. And uh, if you go through, this is um, the Florida statute section 517.07. And um, this has to do with um, the uh, YBAs. This is the yield bearing accounts. And um, one of the things that is going on is, you know, where we're targeting these YouTubers who are promoting fraudulent products. And part of the yield bearing account was, okay, you're promising me yield over FTX. How are you doing that, et cetera? And um, the case would be made that this is part of the Ponzi slash scam. So this would be count one is pushing the YBAs, the yield bearing account that YouTubers uh, did. Um, the other one is two count two. Um, this is the uh, one where um, the defendants, um, they're charging unfair and deceptive practices as described herein where consumers oriented and objectively material like likely to mislead and have materially misled uh, consumers acting reasonably in the circumstances. So um, again, this is like uh, misleading sort of what the products are and, what, and what's going on here. Um, moreover, which I think is um, interesting, you're looking at count three, um, they've specifically mentioned Ponzi's. Uh, the FTX entities and the defendants, so those are the YouTubers, uh, made numerous misrepresentations and omissions to the plaintiffs and class members about the FTX platform, right? So all the times they said something that about FTX that essentially wasn't true, these kind of things. Um, they induced confidence to drive consumers to invest in what was ultimately a Ponzi scheme, right? And part of the thing that I think is important to mention, I mentioned over and over again, um, the confidence from these YouTubers has been important because all of them were doing it. And so sometimes they'll probably try to play the defense of like, well, no one signed up for my link. You know, they signed up for someone else's link. Therefore, I am not liable. They're all part of the same agency all pushing the same con game. And so it doesn't matter if they, you know, sign up for Tom Nash's or meet Kevin's or Graham Stephens or Brian June's or Andre Zeke's, there's a long list, or the BitBoy dude, right? Um, they're all collectively pushing it together. And it was kind of a lotto, uh, you know, a, a lottery essentially, like who would get the actual, you know, essentially a deal passed through, but they're all part of the same network. So this is where I think um, the, the, they're gonna face uh, some challenges. Also take a look at count four, um, there's a part here that I think is interesting. It says, um, uh, plaintiffs and members of classes purchase uh, yield-bearing accounts based in part of justify reliance on the defendant's misrepresentations and omissions. So again, um, sort of everything that they said in the advertising right over and over again, um, could it be a misrepresentation or an omission? They're not telling you the full story um, and pumping FTX. I think this is sort of what's going on here. And then last, you're going to ask, basically, give me my money. The other thing, too, which I think is key to understand this lawsuit, we're talking about jurisdiction and venue, um, the sum is exceeding, uh, there's a one, a lot of zeros, but it's a billion dollars. Um, we're talking about multiple states, multiple countries. Uh, this is sort of where a class action seems appropriate. Um, there's a couple other things I want to point out to you guys as well. When you're talking about the yield-bearing accounts, right, the YBAs, uh, the details of the EARN program were listed on the FTX website 
under section, quote, how can I earn yield on my FTX deposits? And then um, they're saying here, you can earn yield on the crypto purchases and deposits as well as your fiat assets in your FTX app by opting in, uh, participating in staking supported assets in the FTX account. You're able to earn up to 8% on your assets. And so this is sort of the, the part where it's like, where is this money coming from? How you're guaranteed, right? It says, no on the FTX site does describe how this yield, it will be generated. And so remember, um, the YouTubers were pumping this thing uh, which essentially turned out to be fraudulent. Also, moreover, um, according to the National Association of Professional Financial Advisors, um, essentially a lot of young people are getting their financial advice from social media. So this is basically saying 39% um, of Americans under 65 receive financial advice from social media right here. That's the 39%. When you're talking about YouTube, 63% uh, and 71%. Uh, they come to it to discuss financial planning and investment in cryptocurrency. Um, and then it's saying here more than 60% of these people have acted on said advice. Uh, this is important because the um, defense that the YouTubers are trying to make is like, oh, we just put our information out there. It's it's not my fault that people are acting, <laughs> getting FCX, etc. Remember, these people were paid uh, to pump you something that was fraudulent. And um, according to this state, at least, a lot of these young people do act on uh, said advice. Moreover, you can see here, um, this is the uh, targeting cryptocurrency audiences and found its way into daily routines of millions of cryptocurrency enthusiasts uh, worldwide. This is so where YouTube, I, I believe, is different than the Tom Brady or Shaquille and other thing like that. So you're talking about people who are doing it every single day. And um, essentially, these people are looking to this stuff for financial advice, whereas you watch the Super Bowl or you're watching a basketball game, not necessarily looking to watch a basketball game or a sports star for financial advice, whereas YouTube specifically are. So it is a different scenario. Um, we can read here, moreover, um, many of the most famous finance and money social media influencers collaborated, right, with FTX, their collaboration, working under the umbrella of the defendant, Credo's agency, a talent management for digital creators. Credo's agency touts its expansive reach, claiming to have reached millions, right? Got this here, right here, millions, uh, including 2.94 billion uh, plus YouTube views, 27 YouTube, uh, 27 million plus YouTube subscribers, though not all creative agency clients endorsed FTX, right? So this would be something like a Spencer. They didn't all endorse it. Um, many of the talent it manages, including um, a certain of the defendants, netted hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, from signed contracts procured and or facilitated by the agency. Um, and you can read more over for the lawsuit. For their part, defendants Kevin Pathrath, Graham Stephan, Tom Nash, who prior to the FTX collapse pro FTX as a safe investment to their legion of followers have now scrubbed their YouTube channels of all video clips endorsing FTX and praising Sam Bakeman free. This is something that I believe was in the contracts of um, the advertising of FTX is that they always had to say something nice about Sam Bakeman free. Um, in their place, YouTube influencers have substituted uh, me culpa basically saying, I'm sorry, and apology videos acknowledging their significant role in promoting FTX. So uh, the lawsuits claiming here, you know, this is a big part of it is that even the YouTubers themselves are admitting guilt, saying they're sorry. This is, a, I think, a big part, and a lot of them did that. And um, if you remember, too, I think they're all going off a script. I made a video about that where they're all saying the same kind of sorry, uh, causing billions of dollars of investor losses. For example, defendant Kevin Pathrath, who upon information and belief received 2500 every time he mentioned FTX in his videos, uh, posted to his Meet Kevin channel. And uh, this is a quote from Meet Kevin here. Yes. I used to sponsored by FTX. I think that is a disgrace and it's a scar and it sucks. If I would go back, I would change it because people got hurt because of that. I feel so terribly about that, right? So they're not they're not um, denying that they did these things, right? People got hurt because FTX and it's uh, it's a disgrace. Also, Graham Stephan, again, it's all the lawsuit. Graham Stephan helped build a loyal fan base on YouTube by sharing financial advice, right? Financial advice. After aggressively aggressively promoting FTX, he posted a video titled My Response to FTX to his YouTube channel, right? And uh, he's saying here, so the quote from Graham Stephan, FTX US has been recurring sponsor here on the channel since spring of this year, right? Again, they're meaning that they did it. I can't even begin to share how devastated and sorry I am. I made the mistake of working with a platform who operates within an industry that does not already have proper consumer protections in place, meaning that they're promoting something that is dangerous, right? He's saying they're meaning that it doesn't have their consumer protections. And moreover, on the most basic level, I made the mistake of assuming that Cyber Free's image had anything to do with his credibility. I fell into this trap of effective tourism. So basically saying, I'm an idiot and I'm, and I'm sorry. 
Um, defendant Tom Nash, uh, who apparently posted a video following FTX bankruptcy, uh, in which he claimed to only have working with FTX US, falsely represented in the video to be, quote, 100 oper operational, nothing is going on at FTX, right? So um, again, uh, that they're making false claims. So this is these are the sort of um, issues that we're facing with the people over uh, at FTX and the YouTubers. Um, there's a, a lot of poly fireworks going to ensue, and uh, we'll see what the sort of responses are. Maybe they're going to issue yet another apology video. Um, my understanding is, is that they have to be tight-lipped about this stuff because they've already sort of admitted that they've done said things, right? They can't say, no, I never did it. Um, basically, what they have to do now is like put pa probably pass the blame on you, uh, retail, and say, well, I put this information out there, but it's really your fault ultimately in the end. That's the sort of argument they're going to make. Uh, the problem with that is that over and over again, daily, they were paid to say, uh, say said things. They did not disclose how much they were paid. They did not disclose they're working part of the same network. And all of this thing, guys, is being tied to a Ponzi. So if I were them, I would be pretty worried, pretty frank. This is a class action lawsuit. Um, we're going to get a lot of hoopla over this. I'm sure it'll hit uh, all of the uh, trade newspaper, the news, and then we'll see how far this goes. So what do you guys think about this? Uh, do you think the government and uh, this lawsuit is serious? Or do you think they're going to get off scot-free? Love to hear your thoughts. Thank you for your time. And I'll catch you in the next video.